Hi everybody, so this tutorial will be focusing on using the vertex coloring toolset in ProBuilder. It's one of the older parts, so unfortunately we will have to dive back into the old ProBuilder menu. But first let's create actually just a couple objects to start here, because I'll be kind of bumping some colors on and off on them here. Maybe that. Beautiful. Okay, so we have a few shapes here to start with. I'll go to Tools, ProBuilder and then under even I've forgotten uh, editor and open the vertex color editor. So again, unfortunately, this is part of the older system. So I'll have to go through this, but that's uh, how it is for now. Hopefully we can upgrade this. Okay, so in this vertex color palette, you have all your colors, which of course you can click and modify however you want. They'll, sit, we, uh, they'll be saved there. You can create multiple palettes if you really want to even. This is just right now using the default and you can save extras. Actually, I shouldn't uh, talk down on that one. It's very useful if you want to keep a good set of consistent colors in a level you're working on, which is um, really, really important actually. So anywho, uh, what was I saying? You can set colors here, of course. You can apply the color to items, which we'll talk about in a moment, and pick colors from the world as well via the picking icon here. So let's go ahead and try this out. The first and simplest way you can do that is applying to entire objects. So pick the object and hit apply, and it will apply the color right on top. So give a couple of these some different colors. And actually, first of all, I should mention the most important part here. I'm gonna pull up the project view and we're gonna talk about a little bit of how to make sure your colors are showing up. So vertex colors are awesome, but they're still for whatever reason not default supported by Unity. So you've gotta make sure you have a material that supports that. For example, I have a material here, actually just by good chance it is a basic URP standard blah 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 whatever material. So if I take that and place it onto an object, all that vertex color is gone. So I can select this and click apply all I want on any colors. I won't see anything. The color is being applied. It's saved to the ProBuilder mesh, but the material, or rather, I guess the shader needs to know what to do with that color. So the easiest way to make this work is to just make sure you use the ProBuilder default shader. So if I go back to this, uh, this material here in the shader here, I'm going to look for ProBuilder 6, and there should be a standard vertex color. You'll see, as soon as I turn that on, it comes right back. This also has the ProBuilder texture in it. Uh, you can remove that or whatever if you don't want to see it. I'll keep it here just because it helps for a little bit of, I think, uh, distinction on the objects. So with that in mind, just remember, make sure you do that yourself. You can also look up lots of tutorials on shader graph and such if you need to make your own shaders to have vertex colors. Otherwise, just use the ProBuilder one and remove the material or whatever if you need to. Okay, so we'll continue along with that. Let's see, so, yep, applying to entire objects. Easy peasy, easy to do. Uh, we'll get a little more interesting. Let's just delete these other ones and go back to this one and give it a more normal color, just make it flat white and start applying to parts of the object. So let's see, I'll go into edit mode on this, select a face and just add a little bit of detail because that'll help us show what we're gonna be doing here. Uh, and actually, let's uh, let's see, I'm gonna put a couple loops in here, do, 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 just do that and then an extra connect and the same thing here. Uh, oh, my shortcut didn't work. Okay, cool. So I just added a bit of extra detail. Remember to check out other tutorials if you wanna know more about that work. Um, and now I'm gonna go around and select these edges that go around. Actually, I could have just used a loop select action there. Should have done that. Uh, anyway, we have this selected. I can apply and just pick any color. I'm going to use sort of, let's say, a darkish color. I'll set this to be a little bit of green, something like that, and then hit apply. And just like that, you've got a pretty nice, sort of pretty good faking of like grunge or ambient occlusion or whatever you might want. Uh, it's a really nice thing, a really nice way to do that. Uh, another thing I like to use it for is, let's um, do, do, do just throw a couple extra cuts through here. So I have some different shapes to use maybe something like that. So a lot of times in a multiplayer level or something, if you're building up, it can be really helpful to mark certain areas as one team zone or another, or just even a danger zone or something in a simple way. So I can select a face, give it a certain color. Maybe this is like orange zone. You know what, that orange is coming out way too strong. I'm gonna go for a lighter one and I'll reapply that to the other two. And then maybe I'd like the outer area here to be, again, just something that kind of contrasts, or if I were 
uh, doing something where I wanted to, to look clearly like a different uh, different team zone or something like that, right? Who knows, whatever it is, uh, really useful to be able to just quickly apply colors to certain faces, and I should probably explain that. So there what I'm doing is selecting a face, and I'll use the, oops, wrong key. Oh, wow, that was an exciting bug. Uh, can I get back? I can't, I've made it worse. Um, ignore that, but uh, if you see it, tell us what happened, wow. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> no errors in the console, it just, um, it deleted what I did. Okay, cool. Well, again, unofficial Pro Builder videos. I'm using a slightly newer version, so, you know. Oh, come on. Give me a, give me a connection there. Okay, this tutorial started so well. All right. I have my masterpiece back. Let's go back to uh, editing it, coloring it. Actually, it's fine. We wanted to show how this really works and I wasn't totally explaining myself. So again, a couple ways of doing that, as I said, to the entire object. Backing up, remember it's here, boom, hit it while the object is selected and you're in object editing mode. Or I just undid, uh, undid that in edit mode. You have then three ways of doing it. So you can select a face. I'll select these three faces here. And then with that selected, whenever you apply a color, I have to go back to that orange, it applies it to the entire face and also keeps any of the corners nice and sharp. So it's not gonna bleed across the, uh, the vertices or edges. Second way you can do that is by selecting an edge. So let's see, I'll take uh, these and this time I'm going to right click and select as a loop around. So I get all those edges going around. And with those selected, I can apply a color. Let's do this one here and I have that. So that will bleed outward because an edge is really just two uh, vertices or it's it's more that way than a face is. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, but you're not saying, again, in the previous version, exactly this face. You're saying you want an edge, which is basically in, only defined by those two points. So it's gonna do that and then blend outward from them. And lastly, you can also do, this is actually looking better than the first one, I'm happy, uh, you can do individual vertices as well. So uh, is there anything interesting for that? Let's just take this one, let's say right here, and I'll also, if you remember from previous tutorials, change this to something a little more sane for the handles. Okay, so I want this one right here to be slightly darker, slightly grungier, so I'm gonna pick, uh, I'll just take the same color and change it and give it a bit of that, and actually maybe I'll make it even kind of darken uh, something like that there. Uh, okay, so then I hit apply and it's applying it just to that one vertex. You can see the others, so now it's fading across from one to the other. So that's just giving you the third and basically the finest level of control. So you're either working on a face, applying it to that entire face or to an edge and it goes to just the two points on that edge and fades outward, or you're applying it to the vertex. So I hope that was useful. I think you can kind of see from this example that it's a really quick, fun, easy way to add a bit of detail to a world that you're building, whether it's just for a prototype and you're just saying, you know, as a level designer, hey, this area is for this team, this area is that, or whatever it might be. Uh, or as a more final artist, if you're going through, you can definitely use this on a fully textured object. Again, make sure you're using the correct shader and just add a little bit of variation here and there. And also don't forget, uh, maybe one of the things that's least used, but probably the best is this is all compatible with ProBuilder's in-game editing tool set. So uh, we don't provide the UI for that, but you can use the full API and this is something your players can use or as your game is running and things are changing, you can be applying vertex colors to things and doing a lot of fun stuff with that. So just good stuff to have. And yeah, I think that's it, rambled enough. Thanks for taking a look. We'll be checking out some of the other editor options in future tutorials. Okay, thanks a bunch. See you later.